Isaiah chapter 52, 1 Thessalonians being the 52nd book of the Bible. Awake, awake, somebody's asleep. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Zion's asleep. And she's asleep today. She, I mean, I heard today some somewhere something said the holy city. It ain't a holy city today, not with the Muslims and the Catholics over there. She is sleeping. Put on thy beautiful garments. You see what Jerusalem looks like today? See what the area? It's dry. It's dead. It's old Jerusalem, the holy city. You'll see there's a holy city there, but it's not holy over there now. It's not set apart. It's not clean. It's not pure. From henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised Gentiles. Also, Paul speaks about the uncircumcision, uh, you know, your heart. Your heart needs to be circumcised. Your soul needs to be circumcised from your flesh. See, we're speaking of a future event here. No unclean thing. Because then it says, and unclean. Righteousness, holiness, will be in the present company in the future in, in Jerusalem. Shake thyself from the dust. And there's plenty of dust over there. Arise. Lay down. It's, and sit down. That's interesting. Sit down. Oh, Jerusalem. You know, sit down. That's where the Lord Jesus Christ is going to have his throne of David. Sit down. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. You know, there's, there's a yoke. Jesus said, you know, come on to me. Take my yoke. Cast your burdens upon me. It's a, it's a band around the neck that Jeremiah want, wore. Of the captivity of Babylon coming. It's having a, a thing around your neck with chains being carried off as slaves. You can't run off. It's a shackle. O Jerusalem, loose thyself with the bands of thy neck. You do it through the Lord Jesus Christ. O captive daughter of Zion, be captive. Carried away. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught. And they're doing that today. They are selling themselves to the United Nations, to the world, for a little peace. We'll give them a little more land so we can have five minutes peace. We'll cut back on these amount of aircraft for a minute of peace. And ye shall be redeemed without money. By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel. The love of Christ. For thus saith the Lord God. My people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there. Exodus 1 8. Now we're going to learn a little history here. And the Assyrian. So we read in time the haikus, the Egyptian pharaoh of the land of Egypt was not the Egyptian. He was a uh, Assyrian, and they said there rose a pharaoh, something like that, that knew that did not know Joseph, and he feared the Jews because they were growing mighty and mighty, and you know why he feared them? Because he was a king ruling in a nation that was not his. And he would say, hey, I could be overpowered easily. So I'll take these people and I'll put them to slave labor. I'll keep them under bondage. And they can't rise up. Now we're going back to Egypt. We're going back to Exodus because this is where Israel is again. They're in bondage. They're in they're not home. 
and they're not home today. They are serving the gods of America. As I've said before, the gods of America on money is a violation to the Jew. When you fall down and, and pick up that dead president's face in your pocket, Daniel wouldn't worship the image. Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo would not worship the image. And yet today, they are sought to see images of dead people in order to do commerce. The Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Well, against the Jew, yeah, without cause. The Jew didn't do anything. But he feared his, his government. He feared his throne. He feared that these people would revolt. And nowhere said they would. Now, therefore, what I, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught, for nothing. What reason did they leave? Why are they not home? World War I, it is said that it prepared the land. World War II said it prepared the people. And they're not there. They that rule over them make them to howl. Man, they were crying out to God in, in Exodus. God told Moses, I hear my people saith the Lord and my name continually every day is blasphemy well that's interesting see Romans chapter 2 verse 24 therefore my people shall know my name they don't know it today Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. Who do they believe today that's speaking? Who is speaking to them? I wonder if ever a Jew has ever cursed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is not the Messiah, they claim. There's coming a day they're going to know who God is and they're going to know him by name. And what is that name? That's a name above all names. Whereby there, there's only one name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. There's no greater name. There's no other name that man will fall down one day and say thou art Jesus, the Christ, God. Now here's a, a verse that we find in Romans chapter 10 verse 7. Right after talking about how to be saved. With the heart. With the mouth condition. And it speaks about. There's neither Jew nor Greek. How beautiful upon the mountains. Are the feet of him that brings good tidings. You know. When a person goes. Knocking on doors. When a person goes passing out tracts, when a person goes preaching the gospel, the Bible calls that beautiful. The Bible calls it precious. He calls it wonderful. You know, all these beautiful women and stuff like that. That's not what God considers beautiful. He considers the word of God beautiful. And says not only does it bring a good time, and it says that publish peace. So it's got to be Jesus Christ and no other good tidings. Good tidings is the gospel. Paul tells us that there's another gospel. There are churches out there, peace, 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 and it's not the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, I'll give you peace not as the world gives. So you've got to have the good tidings of the peace which is God, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you think of peace, people, you know, end of war and stuff like that, that's not just peace. There's an individual peace that a person can get, and it, it, it's not temporal when, it, when it's the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that bringeth good tidings, again, that's the good news, happiness, good tidings of good, good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, declare what salvation is. Now, that semicolon now is an age between the first and second advent that saith unto Zion, thy God reigneth. That's future, not reigning today. So let me ask you a question, Mr. Jehovah Witness. Thy God reigneth. What did the angel Gabriel tell Mary when, at the time that she was conceived of Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost? He says, you're going to have a son. You're going to name him Jesus. He's going to save his people, and he's going to sit in David's throne. Sitting in David's throne, thy God reigneth. In the millennium, thy God is Jesus Christ. Right there. Who are the Jews going to worship one day? They're going to worship God. Who is the God? It is Jesus Christ. Thy watchmen. So you can't put watchtower there. You see how the wording is? You know how the great God, the watchmen. He just proclaimed that thy God reigneth, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, and thy watchman. Don't go run to the watchtower. Thy watchman shall lift up the voice. What did they do? They keep alert. They look out for things. Is there an enemy coming? The supply is coming? With the voice together shall they sing. They stand in the gates. They stand on the walls looking all around the city. Make sure nobody's going to come in to try to destroy the city. Make sure there's no enemy. Make sure maybe the, the, the fresh vegetables or the, the supplies are coming in. They tell the people, open the gates. They tell the people, close the gates. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. That's today. The waste places of Jerusalem, that is today. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Bought back. Paid the price. That's yet future. He's redeemed it, but he hasn't completely claimed it back. Like us, Christian, we're redeemed. We're bought. He just hasn't taken us home yet. The Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. The gospel is going to go all the way around the world. All the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Revelation 1, 5-8. When Jesus Christ comes, the whole world's going to see him. How? I have no idea. Depart ye. Depart ye. Well, we started with wake, awake, awake. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Get out. Jesus said, if there be two people in the field, one will be taken. But he says, listen, if you're in the house, stop. Run. Get out when you see the abomination and desolation. Don't go back and get your coat. Go. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you. And the God of Israel will be your rearward. Alright, he's going to go before you and he's going to be behind you. 
the omnipresence of God of Israel. Israel is going to be engulfed by God all around. Behold, my servant, Jesus, shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Well, literally, Jerusalem in the millennium is going to be the highest. The only highest place on this earth. As many were astonished at thee. Ready? How do you know it's Jesus? His visage was so marred more than any man. They were astonished at thee. That's the first advent. And then they abused and bruised and tortured him. His form more than the sons of men. He took a licking like no one ever took a licking. And I say that reverently. You know, if you were to see Jesus walking to Calvary, I would assume you would have saw the bones, you would have saw the muscles, you would have saw the sinews, you would have saw the blood vessels, you would see maybe even organs. The Bible speaks about they plowed his back like a farmer plows the ground. They peer, they pulled his his hair, his beard out. I guarantee chunks of flesh would have come with that. So many I heard some of they 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 were they plucked his hair out with the tweezers. All right. So shall he sprinkle. Watch the wording. Many nations. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoso believe in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Jesus Christ came for every man. But not all men will be saved. Not all nations will be sprinkled by Christ. There are, And this is the separation of goat and sheep nations. These are the nations of the attitude they had to the Jews. In the tribulation period, if you helped the Jews, you were allowed in the millennial inheritance as a reward. If you did not help the Jews, you were cast into the lake of fire with burners forever. The king shall shut their mouths at him. Yeah, and what are they going to say when the Lord Jesus Christ is coming? Pharaoh, I mean Pharaoh, not uh, uh, King Herod, gave the order to have Christ crucified, even though he declared four times he was innocent. And Jesus stood before him silent. One day the kings of the world will stand before Jesus Christ as he pronounces their sentence and they're not going to be able to say a word. For that which had not been told them shall they see. And that which they had not heard shall they consider. And what is that? And Christ is the answer. He's the reason. He's the, he's the source of salvation. He is the all of all. Imagine coming to the point in your life where it's just too late and you realize there it is. Too many people are, don't realize that. When we go out there and tell them about Jesus Christ and they just, you know, what does it say? Uh, they are astonished. Uh, what's that guy over there, you know, knocking on my door? What's that guy over there preaching with a black book? What, what, what is all that stuff? What a fool. What an idiot. 
And then when they stand before the one we preach, when they when they stand before the one we we giving out gospel tracts up, when we stand when they stand before the ones where we open the Bible with, when we when they stand before the one that we speak of. Oh, uh -huh. now I understand. And yet, it's too late. When a man is cast into hell, he is given full knowledge, full understanding, and full wisdom of who Jesus Christ really is. He could have had it in his life when he was living by the Bible. But he chose to choose anything else but. See, it's either Jesus Christ or it's anything else but. That's all it is. That's, all, that's what it's all about. That's how high God has his son, the Lord Jesus. It's either Jesus Christ and Christianity, which I mean blood-bought, washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, or it's religion. And you put atheism in religion, and you put agnostic in religion, and you put all the churches in religion. There's one foundation. Everything else is everything else but that foundation is, is built upon Satan. And Satan will paint and disguise and decorate whatever you want. But it's not the foundation laid by God. It's not the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one day God, and Jesus will tear away all the facade. He'll tear away all the walls. And he'll show himself as the foundation. And show them their ruin. Now what could be worse? And there are different degrees in hell. The Bible speaks about that. The Bible speaks about in Luke 16, the man had in hell, he had eyes. He had a tongue. He could speak. He knew who Abraham was. He knew he had a family. So he had remembrance. He wants mercy. He doesn't get it. Can you imagine with that what we know what little, about hell and all that? Can you imagine somebody going to hell and seeing their priest? Seeing their pastor? Seeing whoever leads their organization. And looking at that person for all eternity, realizing that you are away from God the Creator, you are away from the Lord Jesus Christ, and you helped me get into this place. What could be more torture? Israel is going to be redeemed. God is not finished with them. Israel is the prodigal son. He's still in the pig pen. He still spent his money. Israel has not yet come to realize. Israel has not yet stepped out and started home for the Father. They are in the pig pen of America. They are in the pig pen of Germany. They are in the pig pen of Europe. Amongst Gentiles. Eaten amongst the Gentiles. Remember, we're dead dogs and, and puke. We're the uncircumcised, which we already read about. And they're feasting and dining with us. And they haven't come to the realization, you know what? Oh, what my father's house has. Oh, what God has given to us. And God has got to turn the pig pen into fire. And even still, with the Antichrist, they're still going to be in that big, that big pig pen. 
You know, he builds them a temple and all that. They don't recognize and will not recognize the Father and all that he had at home. Oh, if I just go to my father and say, I'll be one of your hired servants. They won't realize that until that temple is opened up and that Satan is seated in the holies of holies. Proclaiming to be God. The God of power and forces. May the force be with you and all the junk. At that point, they're going to say, oh, if I were only go to my father. And at that point when they leave, God's redeemed them. He's washed them. Jerusalem's going to be set up again. As they start heading back to the father's house. The joy of the father. The brothers are already angry. The nations are against him. And when we read the nations here, salvation for the Gentile in the tribulation is your conduct on how you treat the Jew and you don't even know what you're doing. Now let me ask you a question with all these stupid movies out there, you know, beat the Antichrist and surviving the Antichrist and, and all these things and... How can you be saved as a Gentile when Jesus said, you don't even know what you're doing to be saved? Because Jesus said, because you, I was in prison, you visited me, I was sick, you, you took care of me. He gave a whole entire list. And they looked at Jesus and said, when and what and how did we do these things? He said, because when you did it unto the least of my brethren, back, step back to John chapter 1, and their reward is the millennium. See, this chapter is plucked full of information. And yet there are nations that he said, you didn't take care of me, you didn't help me, you didn't. And they're going to, when do we do, didn't do that? Because you didn't help the Jew. Both nations, group of nations, did not know what they were doing and did not know what they were supposed to do. So how do you get these movies out there, Gentiles coming out and being saved in the end, individuals? Looks like Gentiles in the tribulation are a corporate salvation, not individual. See, Satan always has that twisted lie. He's got the right salvation, just the wrong period. And once the tribulation period is over, and Jesus Christ comes back and gets those Jews in Celepicio, he's going to be in front of them, the horse. And he's going to encamp himself all the way around the Jews, his omnipresence of them Jews, of who they are and what they are, God's people, never rejected, never put off as a corporation, as a nation. He's going to bring them back into their land just like Joshua. You've got in this book, this chapter, Exodus. And you got Joshua. you got the wilderness. Still Petra. Jesus is coming. And he's set up upon the throne of David in Jerusalem. The Gentiles that will be there will be those that help the Jews. And don't you think those Jews will be rejoicing with the Gentiles that helped them? And the Gentiles that helped them rejoicing with the Jews that they helped? It's like being in glory. Imagine having a bunch of... I don't know how it's going to be, but... You imagine just having a group, have a group of people just come up to you and just start hugging you. Start wrapping your arm, arms around you and all this... Kissing you and loving you in heaven. Say, you know, what, 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 what are you doing? Who are you? Well, you know that missionary you supported in that deep, dark part of Africa? Oh, yeah. 
I only gave a few bucks to that. Yeah, I, I remember that. I gave as much as I could, but it wasn't much. Well, we are the fruits and the results of you sending that guy to us. And imagine the joy that you will have with people that you took part to be saved, who are saved, in glory forever, as much as the Gentiles will have the part of helping the Jews, not knowing they helped them, and the Jews being helped by them in that fellowship of the millennium. With a, with, with a bunch of Christ-like people who have believed on Christ. And I don't think they're going to be for the Jews for us saying, I told you so. It's just going to be one great fellowship with one center mass of attention. Jesus Christ. And Satan's locked up. God is not done with them Jews. Man, the millennia is so... You can't even explain. And then... You can't even pass the millennium to explain, explain glory. Because at the end of the millennium, Satan's loose, and the army comes out, and God says, you're gone. Then we enter into eternity. And then... We'll, Judgment, see, I mean, the great white throne judgment. People are okay, that's a sorrowful event. After that, Christ is told to wipe our tears. That's all, that's it. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. How do you explain that? How do you explain two events that can happen to a Christian? If I were right now put my head on a pillow to take a, take a nap. And die to the world and end up present with the Lord Jesus Christ at that moment. How, how do you feel that? Because at that moment, there is no more pain. There's no more. No, all the pains in my body and glasses and stuff like that, it's gone. How do you explain that? How do you explain that, that moment if we are to be taken out alive at the rapture? Imagine somebody being in a hospital bed, third degree burn, saved. And in that moment, he is just raptured and he's with the he's with the saints in the cloud. How do you explain? No more pain. And yet there's sorrow. Because we won't look back, but when you look back and maybe see amongst the congregation that's in the cloud, there's, a, there's loved ones who won't be there. I'm sorry to say that you think there are people that are saved in your family, your friends and co-workers and church. They won't be there. Too many of them. But it's not about that. It's about Israel. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. His reign. Christ was born to reign. Salvation is this is really a secondary thing. Christ was born to be king. That's what we're reading about. That's what's more important to God. Salvation, yeah, it's important to us. We're not going to hell. But it's about his son. He says, Behold my servant. Isn't that an interesting uh, thing? The prodigal son said, Let me be one of your servants. It's a wonder.